Welcome back everybody. In today's video, let's talk about my, uh, some of the myths, top five myths that I think are very prominent in the fish keeping hobby. So stick around and we'll talk about that in just a second. folks so we'll start out at number five I think one of the things that you hear a lot when you get into the fish keeping hobby and you search the internet and you talk to other people and it that is that fish only grow to the size of their tank or their environment so say you get an Oscar uh, it's really cute it has beautiful colors you know you see it in the fish store and it's only a couple inches long maybe in an inch long just a cute little thing. You don't really do any research and then you later find out, well, man, these things can grow to be a foot long or thereabouts and very thick, very big bodied fish. It's going to be a poop machine. And, and then you read somewhere else, oh, well, this Oscar is only going to grow to the size of the 20 gallon tank I have in it. So it's not going to be a problem. That is absolutely untrue. That Oscar is going to grow. And it's going to grow fast. Oscars grow notoriously fast, so it's probably going to get uh, quite large within a year. And it's going to quickly outgrow that 20-gallon tank. And soon you're just going to have a massive fish and a tank that can't sustain it. And the fish can't live happily because it can't even really swim around or turn around in the tank. So this is absolutely not true. Fish do not grow to the size of the tank. Fish grow to the size they're supposed to grow. And... Uh, they, their growth could be stunted by mal malnutrition or extremely poor water quality in the small tank that you're keeping them in, but it's not true that the fish is only going to grow to the size of the tank. And I'll take you here in just a moment over to my 40 breeder and show you a common pleco that I have that is quite large. And that's another fish that people often pick up that's a sucker fish. They want something to clean the glass, whatever. They pick up a pleco and they don't do any research and they don't realize that a common pleco can get massive. Uh, some of them can get two feet long. I don't think most of them get that large, but most of them are going to get at least a foot, maybe 14 inches or even larger than that. So a very large fish that should be kept in a decent size aquarium or you should have a backup plan and plan to move that fish to a larger tank when, uh, when, when necessary. Okay, so here we can see my common pleco, sorry about the glare, which is quite large. And believe it or not, when I got this particular common pleco, it was, you know, maybe an inch and a half, two inches long. It is currently at least, I would say, 10 or 11 inches, perhaps even a foot from the nose to his tail back here so quite large fish so if you think a fish is going to grow to the size of the tank think again they're going to get quite large especially if they're known to get large okay counting down to number four uh, i hear this a lot i read this a lot um, and it's about filtration i have some videos on filtration you can flip through my videos there aren't that many and find a video about how much filtration you need uh, you will often hear that people want you to turn your tank over up to like 10 times per hour, which is quite a lot of turnover. So you're going to have most likely a massive filter, a canister filter, or a sump type filtration to turn your tank over 10 times per hour. And that's really a myth. You don't really need to turn your tank over 10 times per hour. You don't even really need to turn it over 5 times per hour. Uh, you just need to find a happy medium where your fish are happy, your water quality is good, and the tank uh, in appearance is to your liking because the fish ultimately aren't going to care if there's algae on the glass. And that isn't really a good indication of how good your environment is for the aquatic life that you're keeping in the tank. And another thing you want to keep in mind with thinking about how many times you want to turn over your tank per hour and what kind of filtration you want is what kind of fish you're keeping. Some fish aren't going to want uh, 
a lot of flow in the tank, which if you're turning it over 10 times per hour, chances are it's going to have a massive flow in the tank. So that's something to keep in mind and something to think about. Uh, in these small tanks that I have along the wall here, they're all air driven with sponge filters. And it's almost impossible to know how, how often is your sponge filter turning over a tank. I have no idea. I really don't care to know. And it's not important in the least for me. And these bettas also don't care. And they like very little flow in the tank. So I also don't have the airflow very high uh, on these sponge filters. So that's just a peaceful, gentle filtration for these bettas. So that is definitely a myth and one you should be careful of and just know uh, that you really don't need to do that. Counting down to number three, uh, this is something that kind of annoys me and you do see, hear it a lot and see it a lot. Uh, people that don't know much about fish keeping uh, especially believe this. People believe that you don't need a, hill, a filter or a heater for bettas and this is a myth. Can you keep a betta without a heater and a filter? Yes, you can. Will it live very long? Probably not. In actuality, what you want to do is get a heater and have a filter for your betta. Your betta is going to thank you. It's going to live longer. It's going to look. It's going to have better color. It's just going to be a, a better overall fish for you and just a, a healthier specimen. And so it's a win-win situation for everyone. Okay, moving on to myth number four. Uh, myth number four has to do with cleaner fish or snails. A lot of people will uh, say, oh, I've got algae or I've got some sort of nasty buildup in my tank. And the solution that I'm going to think up is just to get a cleaner fish or some snails. So common cleaner fish include plecos. Uh, we've already discussed the common pleco. They get massive, so they're far from cleaning. They're going to be huge poop machines. They're going to contribute to... Uh, the waste in your tank significantly, especially as they grow large. So that's not really a solution. Bristle nose plecos stay much smaller, but again, even though they're smaller, they are also poop machines. And in my experience, they don't tend to eat that much algae, especially if you're feeding good foods uh, that they like to eat, or you're giving them vegetables, which they like to eat, like green beans, uh, French cut green beans, cucumbers, um, whatever. Uh, they're much they're going to prefer to eat those things that you're feeding and not the algae on the glass especially some of the more troublesome algae like blackbeard algae I, I don't see them touch that hardly hardly at all so uh, the idea that they're going to clean your tank is probably a little far-fetched unless you're starving them and of course we don't want to starve them because we want them to be healthy fish so that's going to involve feeding them high quality foods some of the other fish that you might think of are quarry cats, and I have quarry cats in a lot of tanks. You also have to feed them too, so you're going to want to feed something that sinks to the bottom that they can eat. Now it is true that quarry cats do an excellent job, I mean, and I mean an excellent job, of cleaning up the bottom substrate of your tank. They will sift through uh, whatever you have on the bottom, pebbles, rocks, sand. They will get in all the nooks and little crannies and pick up all the uneaten food. They do an excellent job at that. Uh, but you really shouldn't just be keeping them with the idea that they're going to clean your tank. There's really no substitute for you cleaning your tank yourself. Now, uh, as far as snails go, I have a lot of mystery snails. And mystery snails also don't do a spectacular job of cleaning the tank. They mostly contribute to the waste in the overall tank. They're cool snails to look at. They do funny things. They hop off of logs and cruise to the bottom. They cruise up and down the glass, and they will sort of munch on some things that are on the glass. But again, you're going to want to feed them, and ultimately they contribute a lot of waste to the tank. Finally, that brings us to myth number five. Uh, I am a very small channel. I don't have that many subscribers, and I don't get a ton of comments on the, video, the videos I make. But one of the more common comments I get on videos is people telling me that I should not clean filter media in tap water, or water that has a minuscule amount of chlorine in it because chlorine will kill the will kill the beneficial bacteria that is in the media in my filters. This is a myth. Believe it or not, this is a myth. Almost every one of these people that has commented on my videos telling me that I shouldn't do this uh, or that I should be doing something else 
has just heard this one time or another because it's so prominent in the fish keeping hobby that most people believe it and by habit just by extension they clean all of their media in tank water or they use a little dechlorinator and then clean their filter media. The truth of the matter is there isn't much chlorine in most people's water supply and we're not dunking our media in the water and leaving it there for a day or two days or a week. We're literally just cleaning it in a very short amount of time that it takes to get whatever debris is, uh, has accumulated in whatever filtering media it is we're cleaning. And in that short period of time, the small amount of chlorine that is in that water will not kill all of your beneficial bacteria or even a significant amount of it. So this is just a myth and it is hard to believe for some people and I'm getting a little worked up about it because it's, it's just pops up so frequently. It, it, it's just something that a lot of people hear, that a lot of people read, and most everyone believes it. But it just isn't true. It just isn't true. Uh, if you want to clean your filter media in tank water, there is by no means anything wrong with that. And I do that with my biological media, especially in some of my sponges, simply because I want... Uh, that bucket full of fish poop and debris and things to water my plants with. Uh, so in that sense, you know, it's perfectly fine. But when I bust open a canister filter and, and the sponge inside of it is just full of muck, I rinse it out in the sink. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Zero, nothing wrong with doing that. And it will not affect the cycle in your tank. It will not kill all the beneficial bacteria. Uh, so. It just isn't true. Thanks for sticking around.